Good day everyone. We're getting right back into things here with SCP-679, otherwise known as the I-Rot. Object class is Keter. Special Containment Procedures. Samples of SCP-679 should be contained in sealed glass vials with temperature kept at 25 degrees Celsius. Infected subjects should be kept restrained in a sterile environment. All personnel handling samples or subjects should wear Class A hazmat suits. Any material or infected subjects removed from containment should be incinerated immediately. To prevent potential cross-contamination, at no point should samples of SCP-679 and SCP-1077 be stored at the same facility. Not just the same room, the same facility. Description. SCP-679 is a fungal infection of a previously unknown Aspralagus species. It was discovered among the local homeless population in Florida. It is highly infectious through direct contact with the fungus, though other means of transmission have not been ruled out. In early stages, subjects complain about anoptic phenomena. Subjects report seeing tiny bright dots moving rapidly in their field of vision. This is especially prevalent when sneezing or looking into strong blue light. After approximately one week from initial exposure, the sclera turns black. The subject loses vision at this time, becoming entirely blind. Within a day of this, small eucleurations appear in the corner of the eyes. This causes a virtuous humor to begin leaking out, having the appearance of thick black tears. Mycelia are also pushed through the eucleurations. Each mycelium resembles a thin white thread coated with slime, reaching as long as 25 centimeters. As the eucleurations widen and more of the humor leaks out, more mycelia appear. At this stage, the eye begins to rot entirely, a process sped up by the fungus. However, it seems to protect the rest of the eye socket and the nerve, preventing infection by other pathogens in 80 to 90% of test subjects. By the time the eyes have gone entirely, the sockets are filled with the fungus and the thick mass of mycelia hanging from the empty sockets. This process takes approximately two weeks for the time the eucleurations appear. Once the eyes are completely gone, mycelia invade the sinuses, where they then trigger increased mucus production, which the fungus appears to feed on. At this stage, the fungus becomes mobile the individual threads gaining mobility. They move around the subject's face in seemingly random patterns. Once the fungus begins moving on its own, subjects report their vision returning. The fungus appears to have photosensitive cells, as well as a currently poorly understood ability to interface with the optic nerve. Subjects describe normal, and in some cases improved, eyesight except for a much wider field of vision. However, whenever a human with apparently normal eyes enters their field of vision, subjects experience visible hallucinations, fires, dangerous animals, sudden tilts in the floor that seem designed to drive them in the direction of the uninfected. Once they are in range, the mycelia reach out touch the uninfected human's eyes, this appears to be a reproductive strategy for the fungus. Curing the condition has so far been possible only in the earliest stages of infection. Once the cycleria changes, the only treatment is surgical intervention and cauterization of all tissue in the sockets and sinuses. Additional test subjects to explore the life cycle and production of SCP-679 are requested. So, be careful what fungus you touch around the facility. 
But that's all we got for this session. I'll see you all later. And by the way, don't go looking at my desk. I know you have been.